Hello, everyone. Welcome to day two of our FreeBSD Developer Summit for the summer of 2021. We have an exciting schedule today. Uh, first off, we're going to have a talk from Einar, from the ICE, who works with the Icelandic DNS registry. Uh, after that, we have a couple of working groups, uh, actually three different working groups, one of which is Warner's session he talked about yesterday involving workflows. We're going to see if we can fit that into a half hour or not. Um, Finally, towards the end of our day, we're going to have a 14.0 planning session, which, we're, which is going to be an interactive session, kind of a, like a have, need, want type session that we've done at Dev Summits in the past. So you're definitely going to, going to want to be around and on chat for that. And then finally, today, we're going to close uh, with a session of short talks that we call work in progress sessions. Uh, if you are interested in giving a work in progress session talk, well, we can still add these pretty much right up until about the time that WIPs start. There's a table on the wiki page for the Dev Summit that you can go add yourself to. For WIPs, we are looking for a talk that's about the range of five to 10 minutes. You don't have to bring slides unless you really want to. And we'll just do that on the webinar at around 12 noon Pacific um, on our schedule. So that's about all I have. Oh, and another reminder, we do have a survey that we will be posting at the, we'll give you the link tomorrow to kind of get a thought for your experiences for how this Dev Summit is going. So keep in mind what things are working, what things are not. Um, also, please join the hallway track if you have it. Uh, we had a lot of fun activity. I know I hop over there during the breaks. So if you want to talk about stuff or continue conversations that we couldn't quite fit into a time slot, the hallway track is a great, great place to do that. So uh, our first talk for today, as I mentioned, mentioned is Anar. So I'm going to turn it over to Anar. Mm -hmm. So, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. And are my slides showing? Not yet. Not yet, no. That figures. I do like the picture of the whale on your wall. <laughs> yeah, I thought you would. All right, yes, we see your slides. All right. Oh, we go back. Uh, as he said, as you said, my name is Einar. I'm the CTO for ASNIC, which is the DNS registry for .is in Iceland. And we've been using FreeBSD here from the beginning, uh, at least 20 years. And today I'm going to briefly talk about how we use FreeBSD and how we've done in the past and what we're looking forward to in the future. Uh, the company is, it was founded in 1995, but the origins go back at least to 86. There was uh, an organization called Suris that was kind of the birth of the internet in Iceland, the first IP connection, the first international IP connection. And then in 1988, the .is was delegated to Suris, but in 95, they incorporated into ASNIC which was then privatized in 2000. We have around 78,000 registered domains today, and we are an open registry. So registrant can come to us and register domains directly and transfer domains. And we have no registrars, which makes us well almost unique in the DNS world. But this may change in the future, but that's, that's that's how it is today. And that also means that not only do we have to have services for registrars, we also have front ends for customers and we have, have to have, uh, we have to help and uh, customers with their problems. We've been using FreePSD for over 20 years. Uh, and uh, one of our oldest employees, he sent me a list. Uh, it was the oldest list he had. He was from 99 over servers. At that time, there were 10 servers. Uh, today, we are running most things on virtual machines, and we are around 100 virtual machines today. We try to deploy single service servers instead of in the old days. Uh, we deployed many, many services on each server. Uh, we are all self-hosted except for uh, external monitoring and we have domain hosting. 
so uh, domain hosting for second level domains. They are hosted on, on cloud servers around the world. We, ha we have our own two, uh, uh, we have actually we have one data center here in Reykjavik, and then we are co-located in another data center in Reykjavik as well, which is our backup data center. Uh, we are quite, of course, quite small registry, three developers and three ops. And in the last two years or so, we've changed our workflow dramatically. We have increased automation. We started using infrastructure as code and better monitoring. And this, when this was happening, it was all hands on deck. So developers, operators, we all, we all came together, started writing Ansible playbooks. So we've been kind of breaking down the walls between developers and operators. And so if something needs to be done, we all just pitch in and everybody, everybody works together. This has worked very well for us. And this is something we are gonna be keep doing in the future. These are kind of the major services we are running. Of course, DNS, we're using bind for authoritative servers, unbound for resolvers, and we're currently using open DNSSEC for DNSSEC signing but we are replacing that with not DNS in the near future. Uh, our web servers running Apache and PHP FPM. Our EPP server is in-house written in Java. We have uh, multiple PostgreSQL databases and we use HA proxy for reverse proxy and load balancing. And of course, we have many, many other services, but those are kind of the major services. Uh, today, our workflow and how we use FreeBSD, we currently have Ansible playbooks that actually deploy our virtual machines, install the operating system and configure the services. Uh, we might be looking into pre-built images in the future for faster deployments. I will get into get into it on a later slide how actually this process works, but we are basically installing the operating system when we are deploying. So it's a couple of minutes. We have a dedicated Portier server which builds our packages. We attempted to build the whole ports collection, and that obviously was not going to work for us. So now we have a have a package list that we use. And using Ccache and other things, it, is, it works very well for us. We have a Git repo with, uh, with uh, where we where we clone the pack, uh, the ports and we add our local patches there, and usually we merge them upstream very quickly. The migration to Git has made this much easier for us rather than working with uh, subversion. We always prefer to use ports and usually it works without problems. It means we, we can use just package upgrade to upgrade and we can use package audits in an automatic way to let us know if there are known vulnerabilities. We are also using CFS, our upgrade playbooks to a snapshot, a you know, rolling, rolling snapshot of five last upgrades. We'll take a snapshot and then we do the upgrade makes it easier for us to roll back uh, this is probably not very popular but the things that are not free bsd today and the reasons for it uh, our virtual environment is running on proxmox using ceph for shared storage we've been using it for a few years and and it worked very well for us. We haven't, haven't really looked into using uh, FreePSD for virtual environments. We're running GitLab uh, in-house for our DevOps platform and yeah, running it on Debian with the Omnibus package is makes it easier. It is a GitLab is big and 
it is can be difficult to upgrade. So we chose the path of using Debian. Our phone system, the PBX, is running asterisk on Fedora. Since our desktop phones, you need a binary module to work. They won't work with vanilla asterisk. We probably wouldn't have bought those phones if we knew at the time. And then we are running Sentinel as a directory service service for Active Directory and Radius. We always look to use open source software. Uh, the basically the only exceptions are our business ERP uh, software, since invoices have to be generated by a software audited by RSK. The, Icelandic tax revenue. And last I knew, no open source software was on that list. And then we have physical access control. We, I've, I have yet to see physical access control that can be used with open source controllers. So we have to have windows for that. Uh, our networking hardware is mostly Unipair and Cisco. And then we have some Mac OS X desktops. Uh, our tech people, devs and ops usually run either, uh, I think they all run Linux. But the software we use, if it's not in ports, we usually try to add it. And we have some ports already, which are maintained by us. This is uh, our deploy process where we have a Git repo with Ansible playbooks and roles. Now, the first time the playbook runs, it provisions a VM and creates an, creates an ISO with an install config generated by Ansible. And that is pushed to Proxmox, started up, and that installs the operating system and then Ansible uh, finishes configuring it. It works very well. But as you can imagine, it takes some time since it's, it's doing an installation every time we deploy a VM. So we might look into ways to shorten that, but it works. Uh, small updates to configurations are pushed to Git and the playbook runs. And so we don't have to, we don't deploy the VM every time. But major updates, then we can do redeployments, just shut down the old server and deploy a new one. All our playbooks run from a single master and there are some pipelines running in GitLab that run Ansible playbooks. Uh, in the future, we have, a, uh, we have a big project which are, is deploying new signers and name servers for .is domain. We are going to replace open DNSSEC with not DNS. And we're going to replace Solaris running on an old Spark server with FreeBSD running on, on x86. And we are going to set up redundant signers in separate data centers. This is not an easy project. It, it, it's complicated and we're doing it very slowly. But we are we are slowly getting there. We we want to do more redeployments instead of updating servers. So even for small updates, we we want to get to a place where we just destroy the old server and deploy a new one. Uh, we might look into using jails for that. Uh, I've seen uh, I've looked at using Ansible to, to manage jails. But it is, it is different to how we do it today. And we might also look at doing pre-built images with something like Packer. So uh, our pipelines in, Git could, uh, in GitLab could uh, generate pre-built images for us. And the Ansible, so the Ansible playbooks are very short, just instant new images. And uh, we want to get more structure around the way we use Ansible, getting uh, more of it into pipelines in GitLab so it can be better audited 
and access controls. So that was kind of our highlights. I'm sure there are questions. See. So we have one question I've got on IRC. Yeah. Uh, which someone asked, do you know about seeded packages for Perdre? Which I don't know about seeded packages. Um, so I might ask them for more clarification about what that means. But uh, is that a no. topic you're familiar with? No, I'm not familiar with seeded packages. OK, I'm going to try to find out more of what that is about. And then yeah. I'll ask a better question once I do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, mm. I, uh, until there are questions, I can tell you that uh, one of the biggest problems we have in our day to day are in packages with dependency management. For instance, now the the upgrade from Python three seven to three eight it causes problems sometimes, and we try to work around it, but that's that's kind of a, a, a uh, pain point for us. Uh, I hope there will be a better way to deal with with dependencies like that. Um, so I got a little more feedback, I guess, and I don't know if it, how it will fit into your workflow. But apparently, seeded packages is, is the idea of using pre-built FreeBSD.org packages for things that are that you're using that are local and not modified, and only adding, kind of having that as a initial repository and you just build additional things on top of that. that okay. Helps. So, so uh, like, uh, it, oh, okay. So the packages from the FreePSD repo and then just adding your local packages. Yes. And in particular, when you're building your local packages in Padre, it can pull from the stock packages for dependencies. So you don't have to build the full tree. You're only building the ones that you have different options for or the ones that are local ports. Yeah, OK. All right, yeah. At the moment, uh, Putri is, is running fine for us. We, I think uh, we have, at the moment, we have three builders. One of them is just for testing. And around, I think, 3,000 packages. And it's not causing us any, any problems. There are certain ports like uh, we're still building Chromium, which often seems to cause problems. But even big ports like uh, LLV LLVM or, or Rust or anything like that, using C catch makes it a non issue. So another question I had from IRC is, have you looked at using uh, any wrappers around JL, such as Bastille BSD or IO Cage or something like that? No, we haven't. Uh, I've seen, I've seen, uh, I've seen uh, two tutorials. One was for deploying uh, a JL server, and one was. Uh, managing jails with the SSH jails connector. Well, we, I haven't gone, uh, I haven't gone looking at it, looking at it since then. But I can imagine with uh, Bastille, it could, it could become interesting again. Uh, our current workflow actually works. This will make it it could give us uh, an opportunities, but it's not something that we're desperate to do. Okay, another question from IRC is, do you have plans to change your name server from bind to, what is the name of this one? NSD, which I guess is a name server written at NLNet. Uh, NS, uh, the NSD. Yes. The no, we did run NSD in the past, but uh, a few years ago we migrated all of them to bind. There are no plans to 
to migrate them uh, away from bind. But since we're going to st start using not DNS for DNSSEC signing, uh, I think that will be the way to go if we were looking at, at uh, moving away from bind. Okay. Another question uh, someone asked is, why did you pick FreeBSD 20 years ago when you started? Uh, I wasn't here at the time, but Marius, who was at the time, he, he told me that the main, the main reason was the quality of the network stack, which figures since he's a network engineer. And uh, since then, uh, today, I think the main reason is, besides the network stack, is the simplicity of it. It is, we, we like things which are simple. And we have seen how most Linux distros today are becoming increasingly uh, complicated with system D services. So I think those, those two things are the main, main thing which are appealing to us. Are there, is there anything that would be helpful for you or that you would like to see um, in FreeBSD going forward? Uh, I already mentioned uh, better package dependency management. And uh, someone, my colleague actually, actually told me to mention that he would like to see package space. And there was, uh, there was something else he mentioned. I don't remember quite at the moment, but he was he was very he was looking forward to packaged space. Myself, I'm I'm quite on the fence about it. I like it. I kind of like it as it is. A very a very clear separation of base and packages. So another question that came in is. Do you have any plans to move any of your services either off of FreeBSD, <clears throat> excuse me, or onto FreeBSD? Um, related, I had another person ask um, why you aren't currently using FreeBSD to host GitLab. Yeah, uh, uh, I can. I, I asked the GitLab question first. That was pay, that was the re main reason was the complexity of GitLab and the 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 high. Uh, there are uh, GitLab releases upgrades quite frequently, and their omnibus packages on Debian, their, the upgrade scripts there handle migrations and, and uh, upgrades very well, which minimizes work for us. The port in FreeBSD, that would, that would mean a lot of man, uh, manual or, or labor from us to ensure smooth upgrades. But the other services which are not running on FreeBSD today, I think our uh, PBX, the asterisk server would be the next one if we can find a way to use the, the Digion module on FreeBSD. It is a Linux binary module from Digion. I haven't, I haven't seen if it, if it can be used on FreeBSD, but hopefully. So I have a couple more questions about DNS servers. I guess some folks are really curious about using Bind. Um, one question is, did you consider Power DNS? I guess as an alternative to Bind. No, uh, Power DNS has never, never seriously been considered. Uh, there's there hasn't been for a, for a quite a long time any serious discussion about changing DNS servers. Uh, when we were using NSD, we were using uh, NSD for authoritative servers or some services uh, bind as a recursive resolver for some services and authority for some services. And at the moment, it was decided that we would just uh, consolidate and use bind for, for all authoritative servers and then unbound for resolvers. Okay, I think that answered the other question someone had, which was, 
why you went from NSD to bind, but it sounds like just consolidated on a single one, yeah. just to be simpler. I, I'm getting a message from my colleague here. You, you, the one, the thing he wants to see in FreeBSD is KASLR, the kernel uh, address ah. space layout randomizer. So well, maybe that that's been, something we, we can bring up in the 14 out of session to see yeah. who other folks who might may or may not be interested in that. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I've looked around. I don't see any other questions at the moment. So thank you very much for your talk, um, at NR. So yeah. now, folks, we'll move on to our first break of the day. Um, and we'll hang out for about 15 minutes. And then we'll come back and have our first working group session, which is going to be on the topic of boot code. that will be hosted by Alan Jude. Thank you very much. Thanks, NR. <laughs>